Hey there everyone, it's Braden here for gshelper.com and today I'm going to show you how to sort values within a table from high to low. This would be extremely helpful if, for example, you had a game that you could play against your friends, locally of course, and each time you played a new score would be written to a table, so you would be able to then show a leaderboard from high to low and then show who has the highest score. Uh, to start off, I've created the blank project and I have the iPad landscape orientation selected. I'm going to go ahead and go into the tables tab and we're going to create two tables. I'm going to name the first one scores and the second one high scores sorted. Now we need to go into the scores table but it took us into the high scores sorted. That's a bug I think. It switched the places. So let's go into the scores table and I'm going to create five rows uh, just for this demo. Now you would have as many rows um, as you needed to fit your game. Uh, pretty much these are just going to be scores in, for example, if I had a game. Uh, so we're going to create random scores in here in random order. So let's say the first player got 15 points, the second player got 20 points, the third player got uh, four points, the fourth player did really well and got 250 points, and the fifth player got 251. Those are just random values that I came up with. Um, we can back out and let's go into the high sorted table and again create five rows. Integer type, but leave them blank because we're going to be writing to this table. Next, let's click the home button and go into the initial scene. In the inspector, I'm going to click the attributes tab and create one new game attribute, integer type, and I'm going to name it row. And we're going to set its value to 1. Back in the actor tab, I'm going to create a new actor by cl clicking the plus button, and I'm going to name it round rules. Let's go inside of the round rules actor by double clicking on it. I'm going to give it a quick color, and we need to add two self attributes to this actor, both integer type. We're going to name the first one highest value grab and leave that at zero, and the second one right score. I added two E's to the end of that. All right, leave those both at zero. Next, we're going to grab the loop behavior. Throughout this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the loop behavior, uh, the table search value, writable tables, and a cool trick with the max function. Uh, so that's really cool. Uh, once the loop behavior is in the logic stack, go ahead and select game.row and choose equal or less than. And in the functions, select table row count. And for the table, we're going to replace it with scores. So the loop behavior will pretty much cycle through a list of behaviors until a certain condition is met. So in this example, we're going to repeat a bunch of behaviors until game.row equals how many rows there are in the table. In other words, we're going to cycle through until we've cycled through uh, the entire table. Alright, so once that's set up, we're going to grab a change attribute from the library, and we're going to change self highest value and open the expression editor by clicking the little e and we're going to insert the max function. Delete everything up until the first open parentheses. Now what we need to do here is manually write out all of the rows in the scores table. The max value picks the highest value from uh, these inputted scores. So uh, for example, we couldn't use the table merge value function because that will merge all of the values within that table and create one value. What we need to do is actually select all of the individual rows that have individual values so that the max function can do its work. So once we have that done, I'm going to select the table cell value function. For table, I'm going to say scores, row 1, column 1, move your cursor outside of the close parenthesis, put a comma and then enter another table cell value function table is going to be scores row 2 column 1 you get the idea we need to do this five times total scores row 3 column 1 table cell value if it's a long, ex long expression like this we need to hit the right arrow on our keyboard for table 
we're going to put scores, row 4, column 1, and finally, table cell value, score, row 5, column 1, and then move your cursor outside of the close parenthesis and put one more close parenthesis. All right. So what this is going to do is it's going to look at all of the rows and values in the sorted table and it's going to grab the highest value and apply it to this attribute. Next we're going to add another change attribute behavior into the logic stack of this loop and we're going to change score to self highest value grab. And you'll see how this will come into play in a minute. Uh, next, we're going to change or grab the change table value behavior, and we're going to grab the highest sorted table though. For row, we're going to choose game.row, column one, because there's only one column. And for value, click the E to open the expression editor, and we're going to click self write score. After that's entered, we're going to add a change attribute. And we're going to ch uh, choose self write score to click the new table search function. This is what the table search function looks like. I'm going to be going over this pretty quickly. If you haven't seen how to uh, use this, I go into great detail about it in another video tutorial. You may need to look that up. We're going to search the game.scores table. The key is going to be self.highestValueGrab. We're going to be searching a column, target row columns one, start range one, and range five, because there's five rows. And we're going to be looking for the exact match. Okay, next we're gonna add another change table value below that change attribute, and we're going to change game.scores. Row is going to be self.writeScore, column one. Value is going to be zero. Now let me explain what this does. This first change attribute will grab the highest value from the scores table, and then we're going to apply it to this write score attribute, and then we're going to change uh, the table value, or the table highest scores sorted, uh, and we're going to apply and write the highest value from the scores table to that table in row one. And this is all happening within the first uh, cycle through. And then what we're going to do, because it's going to be cycling through five times total in this case, we need to make sure that we get rid of that value that we just grabbed in the scores table so that next time it comes through, it doesn't pick that value again. Because remember, the max value always picks the highest value uh, for whatever we decided to input. So that's what we're doing with this self write score pretty much because we applied the highest value to this attribute what we're going to do is search the scores attribute we're going to search for that value we just grabbed and then it's going to return the row that it found it in so for example I don't know what the highest value is but let's say it's in row 5 so this attribute would be now set to 5 and so then we choose the scores table row 5 for example column 1 and we change it to 0 because there's no lesser value than zero so that way the max value will not pick that row again hopefully that makes sense we need to do one more thing and we're going to add a change attribute below this and we're going to change game.row to game.row plus one and so when it hits this it's going to change it to row two it's going to go through all of this again until it gets to row five so it's going to cycle through a total of five times Alright, next I'm going to create another actor, and I'm going to call it display. And we're going to go into the display actor, and I'm going to add a display text behavior, and we need to show each table cell value. So for table, because we want to show the highest values in uh, high to low. So for table, we're going to select high scores sorted, row 1, column 1. Outside of the close parenthesis, add two periods, and then we're going to uh, copy all of this again and paste. And instead of row one, we're going to do row two, dot dot. And we will copy this again. Now you'll notice when you paste this, because I don't want to have to go into the insert function tab, 
Uh, when you do paste this, you'll notice it leaves a space between the two periods. You need to make sure that that's gone so that the table cell value function starts up right after those two periods. All right, 3, 1, copy this again, paste, get rid of the space, dot, dot, and 4, 1, dot, dot, and we'll copy this again one last time, and we'll paste, remove the space, and 5, 1. And so we'll add a quick color so we can see the results. And now we'll add the display text behavior or actor to the scene right in the middle. And we'll move the round rules actor off the screen. And now when we preview, you'll see a bunch of numbers. Now they're not, they look like they're all a bunch of one number, but you can actually notice that it's 251, 250, 20, 15, and 4. So if we go to the scores, 250, 251, 20, 15, 4. Um, they're just all grouped together, but you can actually see that they are sorted from highest to lowest. Now, if you wanted to uh, actually see the difference, you could, after each two dots, you could add open quote, dot, dot, close quote, open quote, dot, dot, close quote, dot, dot. You need to make sure that you do add another dot, dot after the quotes. open quote dot dot close quote dot dot and then you should be able to see each value independently uh, displayed so that's how you would go ahead and show a table and sort it from a random number uh, a random values and sort it from highest to lowest uh, and you can go ahead and apply any um, number so if we did 250 to uh, Let's do 249, 248, and let's say 500. You can change it all up and it will um, automatically go ahead and sort them for you. So it's really cool. The loop behavior is extremely helpful, and so is the table search value. And additionally, I showed you a cool trick uh, with the max function. A lot of people think that you can only add two variables. Uh, to the max function because it says max and min uh, but you can actually add unlimited number of variables so you can add you know five different variables ten different variables table cell values whatever you need and it will go ahead and select the highest value so that's about it guys I will be posting this demo along with the video tutorial on my spare code thread uh, on the forums uh, in my community tutorials thread. Uh, if you guys have any questions, feel free to let me know. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.